Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your host, Brian, and welcome back to another Q&A episode. Before we jump into how I do a drum cover, as well as answer your questions afterwards, let's start off with some news. All right, so as I stated in my last video, this is actually gonna be the last standalone Q&A episode. So this is gonna get merged in with the McGriff Show for next week. That's gonna be episode five. Actually looking forward to getting back into that and showing you guys any sort of solos that you guys have done, as well as do some shouts for you guys too. So tune in next week for episode five of the McGriff Show. In terms of collaborations, I've actually got three as of now. One I'm actually gonna release this week with my good friend, John Brooks, AKA John BMX for Christ. Uh, this much I will tell you, it's actually from Megadeth, but make sure you stay tuned so you can see which song we're gonna cover. The next one is actually from my good friend, Mark Young. And if you have seen the podcast episode, we, you realize we could talk a good bit about Metallica and we figured why not cover a song from Metallica? So like John BMX for Christ, I'm not gonna ruin the song, but you at least know what the artists we are. So go like guessing which song it is. Hey Mark, shh, no telling anybody. And the last one is actually from my other good friend, Ryan Thompson. He keeps himself a little bit busy, and I actually reached out to him to see if he wanted to do this one. And it's actually from Good Charlotte, and this one I will spoil, but it's from Good Charlotte, and the song was The Truth. So right now we're kind of working out the details there, so stay tuned for that one, too. I'm trying to work it out with Ryan. It looks like he's a little bit busy at the moment, so let's see what happens there. As I also stated in the last video, too, I had mentioned I'm on my Patreon page, so there's no travel vlogs in this one. I've already covered the Nashville trip, so... All sorts of traveling, not much is done on here. If you do want to see my travel photography, as well as any vlogs, make sure you tune in and become a patron today. It's only $2 to become one today. And I got the link down in the description below too. So I'm also going to reach out to you guys, see if you guys have any extra questions you want to ask, because I'm also going to include extra questions from my podcast interviews. Make sure you all tune in to my Patreon page if you want to and become a patron today. And lastly, before we jump into the how to, I do my own drum covers. I'm actually going to show you guys a little clip. And this one was put together by a friend of mine because outside of my All Music Matters Net podcast, I also do what's called Upper Gribs podcast. Or it's technically Upper Gribs talk show. That's at least what we call it. But regardless, it's between me and a good friend named Lenny. And we've done a good couple of interviews so far. So I strongly recommend if you guys haven't subscribed already, head on over and subscribe. I'll leave the link down in the description below. There's a nice little clip that my friend put together. So take it away, Lenny. Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? This is the Up For Grip Show. Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? My name is Brian, and that down there is... Whatever down the third. <laughs> yep, and welcome to the Up For Grip Show. Hey Larissa. How's it going? Not too bad. Not too bad. Got at least. Are you, uh, are you just doing uh, the audio? Is that it? Yeah, if that's okay. We all have, we all have smiling... Uh... The smiling people in our lives that aren't, that aren't really there when the, the going gets tough, right? I mean... Uh... Just women in themselves, it is just, there's no home value. Women want to party quite often, and um, they don't value their home life. They don't even value themselves. Just stretch your idea of what it is and what it can be and what it can do for you, and um, it can shape, it can make friendships for you, you know? The thing that you're really good at athletically, you know, and, and could open up doors for you that way, or it could just you know, be that that constant routine thing in your life that's just healthy and therapeutic and, you know, good. That people look at this character and they go, that's what I want to be like. Played it well, they just say, I'm a man, you know, and get all, you know, gorilla-like. And you're like, well, that there's so much more to being a man and a leader. It's living an example in yourself. What a comeback story. It's inspirational, and it's possible to be able to change yourself. All right, so my approach to a drum cover is pretty straightforward. I will admit, way back in the day, I actually used to use the iRig, and this one's more specifically the iRig 2. And this is perhaps more budget-friendly for some of you drummers out there who are just looking to get into drum covers on YouTube. I would strongly recommend this, but mine's not really the most budget friendly because I actually have a Focus 18i20 Scarlet, and that one is more of the higher end one. So that one was a little bit of a pretty penny to buy, but regardless, 
This is my approach to how to do a drum cover. It's basically taking the sounds out of the module of my Roland TD25K, bring them into my audio interface, bring it onto my DAW on my computer, do it all as MIDI. After I do that, I export it as a Final Cut Pro project, and then bring it all together in Final Cut Pro, and there you go. But to kind of walk you through it real quick, basically I'm plugging two chords into the mono outputs of my Roland TD25K module. and then bring them into the inputs of my Scarlett 18i20 interface. Then I use this USB cord in order to record my MIDI. One end goes into my module and the other end goes into a USB port on the back of my computer. After that, I bring the song together after I've chosen the song I wanna do. I use Amazon Music. It comes through the module into the interface onto the DAW and it does all the audio right then and there. I'll leave a link down in the description below so you guys can see how you guys are able to record two audio tracks at the same time doing this sort of process. But basically, when you're on the DAW, you want to make sure you have three tracks. Two of them are going to be audio, that's going to be for the song. And the last one's going to be strictly for the software instrument. Specifically, I use Superior Drummer 3 in order to like make the sounds you guys hear on my drum covers. After I made the tracks, I got the song on there. And after listening to it a good few times, I actually hop on my drum set, and I record the MIDI. It picks up some ghost notes here and there, so afterwards I'm gonna have to make sure to edit that stuff out and make sure everything lines up. And once everything lines up, I export it as a Final Cut Pro project. It gives me all the files I need as the two audio files and my MIDI. I bring it all together in Final Cut Pro. I shoot the video whenever I feel ready. After that, bring it all together in Final Cut Pro, add in the effects here and there. Then I export it as the final video. That's what you guys see as my YouTube video, so. There you go, gents and gals. There's my, there's my process of how I do a drum cover. And so let's jump right into the questions. So for this week, we got three questions. And the first one is from my good friend, Mark Young. Mark, thank you again so much for coming on my podcast, All Music Matters and that. Talked a good bit about Metallica and a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, Mark's question goes like this. Provided you've been to some live concerts, what are your top three you've been to? And if not, top three you'd want to see. All right. So, Mark, I have been to a good number of live concerts and some more than others. I've seen Billy Price and Jimmy Adler a good few times, and those guys are within the blues, the blues rock, those kind of genres. Uh, to list off the top three that I've absolutely loved, the first one that comes to mind is the one that had Chemist, Mastodon, and Opeth. Those are actually all metal groups and they had came to Pittsburgh and that was the first concert I've been to post pandemic. I know I say post pandemic, but in this case it was no restrictions, no lockdowns, nothing like that. Because even pre pandemic, that's when I saw Kiss and that was actually the last concert I had seen before these guys. So just to get back into the experience, that's why I would say Chemist, Mastodon, Opeth, that'd be the first one. The next one was a couple of days after this one and it was actually during a weekday too. So. I was kind of a little bit of a rush to get out of the show afterwards because I had to get up for work the next day, but that group was Vowels, Gojira, and Deftones. Now this one and the first concert, I do have video footage that I have shown on my channel, so make sure you guys go check that stuff out right there. And Vowels, I would say it was okay. I wasn't too crazy about their music, but I do have respect for them as musicians. But Gojira, man, that was the first time I'd ever seen them before. And they just absolutely killed it too. Deftones came on, they were the headliner, and they killed it too. I have to admit, I was a little judgmental at first because Chino, he was more into like pumping the audience more than like delivering quality music. So I admit, at first I was saying Gojira had dominated more than Deftones, but I think giving it some thought afterwards, I think Deftones were equally just as good too. So that's number two. And the last one was actually my first metal concert I had ever been to. And ironically, it was not in the States. It was actually in Austria. It's more, more specifically Salzburg, Austria. And the story behind this is I was in a German club pretty much all four, four years of high school. And during my junior year going to my senior year, we were able to get a trip to Austria and Germany. And wouldn't you know it, we actually see a poster while driving through Salzburg. We see a poster of Job for a Cowboy and As I Lay Dying. So me and a couple other guys were able to have our teacher and she allowed us to go out. 
ironically, we were amazed that she still allowed us to go out because we got in trouble that day because we accidentally missed our bus where the location was. So a little antsy at first, but she did let us out of the goodness of her heart. And there might have been another band that performed before Job for a Cowboy. I'm not too sure. But I did see the whole set list for Job for a Cowboy. And I was happy to see, I want to say half that set list of As I Died. And that was significant too, because if you know about the history or the controversy that had fallen on As I Died afterwards with Tim LaBasse getting arrested and that sort of thing, I would say it was it was a good thing I saw As I Died before that whole thing happened too. So, so that's the very first metal concert I was at. And then the other two, you just know how it goes. So there you go, Mark. Hope that answers your question. All right, and question number two, my good friend John BMX for Christ. Now, Johns, yours was interesting. What famous female do you have a crush on? <laughs> you know, this one I had to really think over, John, because when you think about famous people, you tend to think that they're going to probably have like a heart of gold because what you see them on camera, and it ends up being like absolute BS. And it gets really tough, and that just seems so fake to me, and that really turns me off. I remember when I used to watch Star Wars on VHS well back, well back in the day when I was a kid. I used to always love Carrie Fisher, especially when she was also in the Blues Brothers. So, But that really changed, and I think thinking on it now, I would have to say Famous Female, and she is in the heavy metal band Spirit Box, and she's the lead singer. She's Courtney LaPlatte. I hope I said that last name right, so I'm sorry if I said it wrong. But Courtney, she just has the voice of an angel when she just sings. And she could also switch to a nice death metal sort of growl, too. So she's absolutely amazing. So there you go, John. I hope that answers your question, because that's as good as it's going to get. And the last question comes from Eric the Dramatic. Eric, I think yours kind of tied in with a separate question that Mark had asked. So Mark, I will review it, and I might answer it in my next little show. So, But Dramatic, your question goes like this. If you could live anywhere in the U.S., where would it be? Okay, so strictly the U.S., not going outside anywhere else. But you know, we're just talking the U.S. When you think about it, too, there's really pros and cons to like any sort of state that you live in, whether it is based on taxes, natural disasters, those sort of things. So most people would probably say Florida, but then you have to deal with the hurricane season coming in, the insurance, and God knows what else. So thinking this one over, and considering all the states that I have been in, I have to say Georgia. And honestly, it's because we've been there so many times with my family. And I love going to Savannah. I've also interviewed a good number of friends out of Columbus, Georgia. That's like actually the second largest city in Georgia. So I don't know where specifically in Georgia. But if I had to pick at least a state, I would say Georgia. Just because it's absolutely beautiful countryside. Good number of man-made lakes and everything. Get to enjoy it. You get to go out with the kayaks. Beautiful setting. Savannah is always really nice. Strongly recommend it to all you guys who haven't been there. So, there you go, Eric. Georgia it is. All right. Well, that wraps up the last Q&A episode. I want to thank you guys so much for your questions and being a part of this. But... That doesn't mean it's all over, so if you guys do have any other questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments, and I'll make sure to address them in the group shows going forward. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you leave a like and a comment below, and consider subscribing so you can show your support and help my channel grow. You guys can also hit me up on the socials. I got the links down in the description below. You can also hit me up on there if you guys want to come on my podcast, All Music Matters and That, Just Chatting Series, or The McGrip Show. Just hit me up there, and I look forward to chatting with you guys. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Stay safe. Stay tuned, y'all.